Hey everyone, I'm Elmer and you're watching the Android Authority channel. Today I'll be comparing the two kinds of jelly bean, Android 4.1 and Android 4.2. Some love the newer version, others find it overhyped and prefer the previous jelly bean. What are the differences between the two? Is one actually much better than the other? Watch this comparison and find out. Let's begin by talking about the interface. The very first screen that greets you after booting up your Android phone or tablet is its lock screen. Android 4.1's lock screen has a modern and sophisticated look. Android 4.2's lock screen is essentially the same, with some cosmetic changes to the digital clock, which now looks slimmer and has moved to the middle. The hour is now set in bold, and the date timeline has turned to all uppercase. The lock icon is still down here, and it still looks the same as in the earlier Jelly Bean. In Android 4.1, you'll slide this lock icon to the icons in the outer ring to either unlock the phone, launch Google Now, or launch the camera. In Android 4.2, only the unlock icon is present on the outer ring. To unlock the device, just slide the lock icon to the outer ring. But how do you launch Google Now or the camera? Google Now has its own lock screen icon in Android 4.2. A dotted circle right here in the center of the navigation bar. Just slide it upwards to launch Google Now. It's one of the new things on the Android 4.2 lock screen. As for launching the camera from the lock screen, pull the right screen edge towards the center. This is one of the big changes in the Android 4.2 lock screen. In fact, the edges of the Android 4.2 lock screen are now functional. The top edge, of course, is for the status bar and notification shade. The bottom edge is for Google Now. Right edge is for camera launching, and left edge is for viewing the other lock screen widgets. Lock screen widgets are also new in Android 4.2. In Android 4.1, you get only one lock screen, but in Android 4.2, you get multiple. You can place widgets on the lock screen so you can view content such as email, SMS, calendar events, and more without having to unlock your phone. Also, Android 4.2 for tablets supports multiple users. These icons here stand for the user profiles available on this tablet. Before unlocking the tablet, you'll need to choose which user profile to load. Navigation is exactly the same in Android 4.1 and Android 4.2. Both versions still use the same virtual back, home, and recent apps buttons. The Android 4.2 home screen is practically a carryover from Android 4.1, with only minor differences, such as the arrangement of default app shortcuts or folders, and a redesigned analog clock on the main home screen. The notification shade is still around, but in Android 4.2, it has a new partner for quick settings. You can now access frequently used settings by simply pulling down the quick settings menu from the status bar. The stock keyboard in Android 4.1 is an excellent keyboard. It's easy to use and it has a lot of useful features such as voice to text, multilingual support, next word prediction, auto correction, and more. The stock Android keyboard has become more amazing in Android 4.2, especially with the introduction of gesture typing. This works like swipe, just slide your finger across the keyboard, no more tapping. Android 4.1 has features that make it a more accessible mobile operating system, including talkback, text-to-speech output, large text, and the like. You'll still find these features in Android 4.2. Plus, a few new accessibility options have been added, including magnification gestures, which lets you magnify the display. Explore by touch, for touch navigation coupled with voice feedback. And accessibility shortcut, for quickly toggling the accessibility features with a button and touch combo. Let's now shift our attention to the communication features in both Jelly Bean versions. Both Jelly Bean versions use the People app for managing and organizing contacts. Not much has changed here, save for the app version number. Similarly, both Jelly Bean versions use the same stock Android phone app. So, you'll still get three tabs here for the dialer, call logs, and people. Android 4.2, however, offers a better call logs list because you can now filter your call logs. The messaging app handles composition, sending, receiving, and managing SMS and MMS messages. Android 4.2's messaging app works essentially in the same way as Android 4.1's. But the newer Android includes a self-broadcast option, which lets you receive important alerts about emergencies and threats to life and property. Gmail is still the reigning default email client in both Android versions, 
But for those who don't want to use Gmail or Gmail app, the stock email app is also available. The email app in both Android versions supports POP3, IMAP, and Exchange protocols. The app drawer is exactly alike in both versions of Jelly Bean. Not much has changed here either. The app icons are still arranged on a grid, and you still get separate tabs for apps and widgets. Apps and widgets management hasn't changed much in Android 4.2. Installing and removing apps is still very much like in Android 4.1. The Google Play Store, of course, is still the primary and preferred source of apps. You'll still need to grant permissions to apps that you want to install. And of course, you can still install apps that you got from other sources other than the Play Store. Among the changes I noticed is the absence of a Latitude app in Android 4.2. However, Latitude can still be accessed from the Maps app, like in Android 4.1. The analog clock widget in Android 4.2 also underwent some transformation from Android 4.1. I actually like the new one. Android 4.2 also comes with a digital clock widget, which Android 4.1 was deprived of. And while we're talking about clocks, the clock app in Android 4.2 has greatly improved. It now includes tabs for a stopwatch and a countdown timer. I also noticed some improvement in the app info screen in Android 4.1. Although the app info page remains essentially similar to that in Android 4.1, I appreciate the improvement in the list of app permissions. I find the new permissions list easier to understand than the one in Android 4.1. For a long time, Android's default browser had been the stock Android browser. But when Google Chrome for Android started appearing, we suspected that it would eventually take the stock Android browser's place. And it has. It is now the default web browser in Android 4.2. Though the Chrome takeover will not come as a big surprise among tablet users, Chrome has been the default web browser on tablets starting with Android 4.1. It is actually the default browser on the Nexus 7 running Android 4.1. Search is handled by Google Now by default in both Android 4.1 and 4.2. It brings together into just one app several of Google's search services such as voice search, Google goggles, web search, videos, and more. Launch Google Now from the home screen by tapping the Google search bar or from anywhere by swiping the home button upwards. Accessing Google Now from the lock screen, however, differs in the two Androids. In Android 4.1, you do it this way. In Android 4.2, you swipe the Google Now icon upwards like this. Among the several differences between Android 4.1 and 4.2, the changes in the camera app are among the most observable. For one, lock screen access to the camera has changed a lot. In Android 4.1, it's like this. But in Android 4.2, it's like this. The new camera user interface also looks different. In fact, I find the Android 4.2 camera more appealing and less cluttered. As you can see here, the viewfinder takes up nearly all the display area, and the buttons do not occupy too much screen space and are not obtrusive, unlike this one in Android 4.1. The square focus indicator in Android 4.1 has taken on a circular shape in Android 4.2. Long tapping on the viewfinder in Android 4.1 does nothing, but in Android 4.2, the action brings up the circular settings menu. Panoramic shooting mode is still available in both Androids, of course. But in Android 4.2, you also get the Photosphere feature, which lets you capture 360-degree photos of your surrounding. The silly faces and background effects in Android 4.1 have been removed in the Android 4.2 video camera. Time-lapse mode, though, is still available in both versions. Both Jelly Beans use the Gallery app for storing photos and videos. The functions and behavior differ little in both Androids. Photo and video thumbnails are still displayed in grid view by default, although you can also switch to film strip view by zooming out on a photo. In Android 4.2, however, you can switch between views through this drop down list. The Gallery app also has a built in photo editor. In Android 4.1, you can switch to the photo editor by tapping the menu button and selecting Edit. Here, you can adjust the black and white and contrast values, apply photo effects, apply color filters, and choose photo transformations. In Android 4.2, the photo editor is more accessible. Just tap on its icon at the corner of the screen. The new photo editor offers more features. 
Here you can apply new filters and effects, custom frames, photo transformation options, and adjust image color and contrast values. The new gallery app in Android 4.2 also includes a built-in video trimmer. There's no trimmer in Android 4.1's gallery app. The gallery app is the default photo viewer in both Android versions. It is also capable of displaying photos in a slideshow. In Android 4.1, it's easier to display album photos in a slideshow. Just tap Display Slideshow button here. In Android 4.2 though, the Slideshow command is tucked away inside the menu here. Straightforward and simple video playback is handled by the built-in video player in the Gallery app in both Jelly Beans. It's a no-frills player. There's no difference in both players. Music playback is handled by the Play Music app both in Android 4.1 and 4.2. So you can enjoy features such as the music organizer for your local and online music files, sorting your music files according to playlist, artist, album, and so on, a five-band equalizer, equalizer presets, creating and managing playlists, and more. The Play Music app can play music in the background even if you navigate to other screens. And if that happens, music control buttons appear on the notification shade and lock screen. As for security, the features that we appreciated in Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich are still present in both Jelly Beans, such as different lock screen protection types, displaying optional owner info on the lock screen, device encryption, SIM card lock for phones, and preventing installation of apps not from the Google Play Store. In addition to those security features, Android 4.2 tightens security further. There's a built-in app verifier that's supposed to alert you if you're about to install a malicious app. The list of Android permissions prior to app installation has also been improved a bit. I find the permissions easier to understand in Android 4.2. Even the permission list in the app info page in Android 4.2 is better described and easier to read compared to the bulleted list in Android 4.1. Each permission on the list is also described if you tap on it like this. There are also new or improved features in Android 4.2 that I believe are also important. For instance, the changes to the Developer Options menu. This menu is present and visible in Android 4.1 Settings menu, but in Android 4.2, it is hidden, and for good reason, I believe. An average user like me will hardly need to fiddle with Developer Options. Doing so just might even cause my device to function below optimum level. There are additional developer options in the Developer Options menu too. Another new thing in Android 4.2 is support for multiple users. This one though is available only on tablets, and understandably so, because tablets are usually shared devices. The multi-user feature lets you set up several profiles, each one with different settings. A user profile can be secured with a password too. You can select which profile to load at the lock screen. Android 4.2 also brings customizable screensavers in the feature called Daydream. The screensaver activates when your device is charging or when it is placed on its dock. You can choose to play a customizable clock, a wallpaper with changing colors, trends from Google Currents, your photos in a slideshow, or a photo table. Also, through Android 4.2's wireless display feature, you can wirelessly stream slideshows, movies, videos, or games from your device to a supported HDTV. Android 4.2 certainly brought several new features and improvements, especially in the camera app, support for wireless display, multi-user support on tablets, tighter security, and several changes to the interface. While some argue that these changes are not major ones, I do find them significant and important. I personally don't think Android 4.2 is the biggest wave of change in Jelly Bean, which is why I'm looking forward to the next major update, Key Lime Pie. What about you? Is Android 4.1 good enough for you? Or are the changes in Android 4.2 attractive enough for you to want it so bad? Let us know in the comments. Get more Android news and reviews at androidauthority.com and from our YouTube channel. This is Elmer, thanks for watching. May the light side of the Android 4s be with you.